Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Philip Blackett here, here with another new episode of Life in the NBA. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a good weekend so far. Just getting back in the swing of things with another week back in business school. But got to count my blessings because there's only a matter of time before my time here at HBS is done. So, but at least for the first semester, right? Finals are coming up pretty soon, not too long ago. Not to mention the fact that the weather is starting to get a little colder than it has been before. So it won't be long before we start welcoming some snowfall um, down over here as well. Now, I know a lot of people definitely will be saying, you know, Boston is a great city, but I hate the weather. I hate when it gets so cold and snowy and icy and that sort of thing. As I kind of talked about with some other people before, I'd rather take my... You know, you got to pick the uh, the lesser of the two evils. You got to choose your poison when it comes to weather. And I'd much rather deal with an icy, snowstorm, blizzard type of weather than some places, <clears throat> California, that deal with earthquakes sometimes. And people down south that may deal with tornadoes and hail and thunderstorms and that sort of thing. Um, and, and flash flood warnings. And, and then some people in the like southeast area, where especially the coastal area, we're taking care of like... Had to worry about hurricanes every season. So, I'm not really worried about that. I'm just worried about enjoying the rest of my time here at business school while I still have it. So, hence me recording these thoughts in Life and MBA. So, for those people who are listening to this for the very first time that's wondering, who is Philip Blackett? Why am I listening to this? What is Life and MBA all about? Very simple. Life in the NBA is a weekly podcast show that I've been doing ever since my first year in business school that shares the good, bad, and sometimes the ugly about being a student in business school. Now, originally I thought it was going to be for family and friends, but now I've realized it's more so helpful for prospective MBA students and applicants, uh, for that matter. People that are thinking about doing business school, whether they're in the United States or globally, shout out to all my international listeners um, that are on the air listening with me as well. So I've been doing this ever since my first year. So currently I'm a second year student at Harvard Business School. No, I am not acting as a spokesperson for Harvard Business School. If you want that sort of thing, you should contact or you should talk to me along with 1,800 plus students at Harvard Business School to give you the full spectrum of what Harvard Business School is really about. I'm just here just to share with you my perspective, just my own thoughts, just my own opinions, just my own outlook on a week by week basis. This is episode 43. We only are going to do two, two seasons of this because I do plan on graduating in May 2016, uh, which is only about six to seven months away. So it's really not that far off uh, than you might think for that matter. So as I said before, I've been doing this 43 episodes in, just sharing with you what business school is about. My plan, my goal for you is to really get the most out of this on a week by week basis to truly understand much better what is it like to be in business school beyond the blog posts you might read, beyond the websites you might go to, beyond the admissions officers you might talk to, beyond just the websites you might visit from time to time. Wouldn't it be great to have a week by week audio diary account of what is it like to be in business school, particularly Harvard Business School for that matter as well. And so what I plan to do each week, including this week as well, is to be able to share with you in about 20 minutes or so, I literally time it on my iPhone, tell you exactly to the best of my ability, I should say, how my week was this past week and what am I looking forward to this next week. We got a jam packed episode uh, to talk about here especially you know addressing the whole title of the episode and you may be asking yourself why I named it as such but before we do just want to give a quick uh, word for our sponsor <laughs> my startup magnetic interviewing magnetic interviewing is a for-profit social enterprise that helps young people develop their soft skills and help them ace their interviews for jobs internships in graduate school including business school for that matter for more information feel free to check out www.magneticinterviewing.com www.magneticinterviewing.com There you can get more information about my startup, be able to sign up for our free 7 video How to Ace Your Interview Boot Camp, and not to mention sign up for our free The 3 B's to Ace Your Interview webinar that you can sign up for as well, perfectly for free. Definitely take advantage of that while you still can. www.magneticinterviewing.com Now with that being said, uh, let's go and get into the show. I'm just pulling up my iPhone as always, going at 20 minutes. I'm looking at the stuff to talk about. We got a lot to cover from, so we're going to be really quick, really snappy, but still get you in and out of here in about 20 minutes or so. So with that being said, the timer just started. So what happened? 
So first off, I want to give a shout out um, to a team of young high school entrepreneurs, uh, Fantasy Sports for Life Foundation. Um, one of the things I've been doing, this is my second year doing it, participating with Catapult, Catapult Ideas, that essentially um, gives me the opportunity or the privilege to serve as an advisor for a team of high school entrepreneurs. Those that are interested in build, building their own business that like to have some sort of advice from graduate students, entrepreneurs, and those in the corporate world for that matter. Last year, I was served as an advisor for two teams. This year, I'm serving as an advisor for one team in particular called Fantasy Sports for Life. Uh, essentially, the quick plug on them is that imagine fantasy sports, but with a social mission. Imagine a way where you can contribute and be a part of a fantasy sports league where the proceeds of your league fees can help you know, provide as a donation for a nonprofit fighting some sort of disease or some sort of foundation that you want to support, regardless of the nonprofit. Just a way essentially to do fantasy sports and benefit nonprofits at the same time. I've had the privilege of working with a couple other advisors over the past few months and up to this point just getting this team of high school students from just the basic concept and idea out to actually being able to present during their own demo day this past Monday. I wasn't able to attend because I had classes that day but I'm very happy to share with you that our team did very very well. How well you may ask? Very simple. They won three awards <laughs> during demo day. They won the biggest social impact award the most investable, aka FOMO award, and they were tied for the most innovative award startup award for that matter. Very, very proud of Garrett and the whole team. Uh, shout outs to Fantasy Sports for Life. Um, you, you all are doing a great job. Very much looking forward to what you do in the future. Uh, just got off a call on uh, Google Hangout with them not too long ago, early today. Uh, just congratulated them firsthand, but want to give them a shout out on the air for that matter. Um, very, very excited to do this once again, second year. Not sure where this will go from here on out, but I'll just say this. I've been very, very grateful to be able to give back, be able to pay it for for some other high school entrepreneurs. Uh, just to help them explore if entrepreneurship is really for them, for that matter. So it's one of those things that I definitely would recommend. If there are ways you can help out with other high school students when it comes to entrepreneurship. Definitely take full advantage of that if it's offered at your business school for that matter as well. Next thing on my list. Um, so one of the classes I take, it's a independent project. Um, one of the things that when you're a second year in business school, at least at Harvard Business School, is that they're all electives. There's no core curriculum in the second year. So you can form your schedule the way you want it to. And one of the independent projects I took up on was essentially tasked with the objective of how can we see if we can apply any best practices from the popular um, social venture MBAs across America um, where MBA students could be able to have similar impact, similar experiences with small town local entrepreneurs in the Boston, Austin area. Now, one of the things for me is that, you know, being able to work with a couple people on the team right now that are fellow students of mine, and we're essentially trying to see if we can have a similar impact for a local entrepreneur. And so this one entrepreneur we're working with, she is based in Austin. Uh, she focuses on ice cream, but not your typical ice cream, not the ones that are full of preservatives and, and certain things that may not be good for you naturally for your body, but more of an alternative ice cream, vegan friendly ice cream shop that's located in Austin. Um, very much excited to work with her in that sense, um, where essentially what we're trying to do is see how we can be of help. Um, to her and help build her business going forward, but also at the same time, as I stressed to students before in class, um, really helping to revamp or, or rebuild the relationship or association of Harvard or Harvard Business School with the local community. You'd be surprised sometimes that like a lot of people talk about Harvard and Harvard Business School having this certain sense of prestige around the world, across the country. Not everyone feels the same. Um, and sometimes when you go in local towns and local America, for that matter, people have certain feelings about the name Harvard or Harvard Business School, whether good or for bad. In any case, how I look at this experience is, is this an experience where we can have a great you know, outcome and experience with a local entrepreneur where we have another um, experience of somebody saying, you know what, 
Harvard Business School was helpful for me and my business. Harvard Business School is a great community stakeholder, a great you know actor or a great you know citizen within the community of Austin or Boston for that matter. And sometimes, as much as we're going across the globe or all around the country, sometimes we ought to have some more investment, whether financially or otherwise, in our local communities as students and as the administration to be able to see how we can not only just give back, but more importantly, collaborate and work together with some of the local communities and businesses that are around the area, literally minutes away from campus. And so being able to pay, take part in this and this project so far, um, being able to see how we can do that going forward. Now, we'll probably get some more status updates as this season continues, but just wanted to share with you what I'm trying to do, what I'm working on with students in this particular independent project. So with that being said, we'll keep the show going on. We got about 14 minutes left. Still got a lot to cover with you. How about I ta tackle this whole sense of what the title of this episode is? You might be asking yourself, Philip, did you really audition for Saturday Night Live? Short answer, not really. But here's the thing. So for the second year in a row, I got to participate in the Sankofa Cultural Show. Um, by HBS's African American Student Union Organization. So basically, it's a cultural show um, that I had the privilege of emceeing last year, um, where the show is basically a, a mix of, of dance, of song, of spoken word, sometimes stepping, of acting, uh, just really a, a cultural show that shows different aspects of African American culture for people attending the show. And so this year, I had the opportunity to participate in a skit and a video, not to mention as an extra, but more importantly in the skit, um, that was a play off of one of my favorite shows of all time. You might guess it, it's Saturday Night Live. So I've been watching Saturday Night Live for a long, long time. And one of my favorite segments that they have on there is called Weekend Update. And if you don't know what it is, it's basically two, um, two cast members that are on you know, basically as news anchors that have a humorous take on the week's issues, what are political, economic, military, current events, you have it, they'll do it. They'll talk about it and they'll make you laugh at the same time. So basically, I um, co-hosted this with a couple friends of mine from school. Shout out to Tito and to Brad, um, Bradford. And um, essentially, here's what we did. We just did a take on Weekend Update. We tackled a number of different issues, whether it was who is ASU going to vote for for presidential candidate in 2016? Um, what is all the fuss about going to Africa for field? Um, you know, both for first year students and second year students. Uh, also talking about our upcoming ASU conference that's coming up on February 5th to 7th, 2016. Just a number of different events, a number of different topics. Really had a good time. Basically dressed up as like Michael Che, my best Michael Che impression. Uh, and really had a lot of fun making people laugh, uh, have a good time. Uh, even you know did some did some hotline bling dances uh, with some of the audience members on stage. I don't know if they have the video of it, but if it is, I'll probably see it. May, might put it on YouTube. Maybe maybe not. We'll just see how it looks before I do that sort of thing. But essentially, is this? We just had a great time. Um, it was a lot of work put into it. I can respect a lot. For those that put in that type of work, especially since I was an MC last year, um, there's a lot of work that comes in for these shows. Uh, so shout outs to those that you know coordinated this um, and, and also just having a good time for that matter. And, and it's one of those things that it just like, reaffirmed to me. One of the things I love doing is acting, performing on stage, making people laugh, making people smile. Um, I guess that kind of keeps my bucket list goal. Uh, of you know one day auditioning for Saturday Night Live maybe or Broadway still you know present still up there for that matter so we'll see how that goes going forward maybe I'll update you on that on a future podcast but anyways let's get this going but before we move on to the next topic just a quick you know pro a quick you know unashamed plug the ASU conference as I mentioned before is happening February 5th to 7th 2016 at Harvard Business School there's four reasons why you probably should go for this matter, at least for what we can talk about right now. We have four keynote speakers. Some of them you may know of, some of them you don't. If you don't know them, definitely deserve to Google them. So first off, we have Deval Patrick, the former governor of Massachusetts. We have Ken Chenault, the CEO of American Express. We also have songstress, Grammy Award winner, musician, very talented, the Alicia Keys. Uh, and we also got you know, the head of Rockefeller Records, uh, 
the one and only Jay-Z Hove coming on campus. You heard me right. These four are being on the conference ticket for keynote addresses in February 5th to 7th, 2016. Shameless plug, if you happen to be interested in this, which I'm sure a lot of you are, and you happen to be in the Boston area from February 5th to 7th, 2016, you deserve to be at this conference. Head on over to www.asuconference.com. A-A-S-U conference.com. A-A-S-U conference.com. You can sign up for tickets for that matter. I already got my ticket. Very much looking forward to that. End of the shameless plug. We'll go and move it, keep it going. So a couple other things before we move into next week. Um, another thing, another show that I really am a fan of, along with Saturday Night Live, is Shark Tank. And I had the privilege of of seeing one of my friends, one of my fellow students who graduated a year ahead of me, um, Desiree, see her company, Unshrink It, appear on Shark Tank on national television on ABC this past Friday, Friday the 13th in November, and pitch her organization uh, with her co-founder. And she actually got a deal with Mark Cuban, the Mark Cuban from Dallas Mavericks. I'm very much inspired by what she was able to do. Very excited. I follow Shark Tank. I practically watch every episode of its seven seasons. Very much a huge fan. Just a shout out. Congratulations to Unshrink It and Desiree and team uh, for a great pitch that they had on Shark Tank. I'm sure they're definitely off to greater things now, uh, even more so uh, after securing the investment from Mark Cuban. Just a whole sense of one of the things that gets me about HBS is that we are building our entrepreneurship offering uh, for students. And it's great to see other fellow student entrepreneurs that are doing big things that are either getting funding, advancing products, building their, their teams for that matter. Because it's one of those things, as I said before, entrepreneurship can be a lonely pathway. So anytime you can support one another, I'm definitely all for it for that matter. Let's celebrate our wins, be there for our losses, and just keep it moving uh, towards finding out how we can really help out a lot of people build our businesses strong and, and, and get about that money for so to speak. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. It's just for me, uh, entrepreneurship is definitely something that I'm very passionate about. And I love seeing other people move their ventures forward. So congratulations again to unshrink it and shark tank for that matter, um, for, for getting the deal on shark tank with Mark Cuban. Um, with it being November 15, I'm just kind of looking at my classes now we're coming towards the end of this first semester. And like I said before, that means I'm going to be halfway through my last year in business school. So we're going to have finals coming up not too long from now. One of the things I like about second year that's different is that you don't necessarily have certain days blocked that you have to be in person for exams for the most part. For the classes in second year at at business school, at least at Harvard Business School, um, some classes, they require exams. Some classes, they require papers. If they require exams, you have, essentially, I can't speak for all the classes, but from what I've sensed, is that you have a certain deadline to have these exams done. There's a certain day that the exam opens, and there's a certain day that the exam closes. And sometime between that timeline, you have to complete an exam. But you don't have to necessarily be in the classroom to do it. Hence, meaning that once classes are done, From what I gather, you can take your exams practically anywhere for that matter. As long as you got internet connection, as long as you complete the exam on time or the paper and submit it on time, you can do it. So I'm very much, you know, basically looking at the calendar and I'm saying, excuse me, I'm going to be done with first semester classes in less than a month and in which I'll be in exam mode. So basically how it looks like to me is just essentially you got about three or four weeks left in class. I think the biggest thing is that I'm learning a lot in each one of these classes, uh, definitely participating, definitely, you know, reading up on cases, but just kind of understand, I think what really hits me about this is essentially that it's almost into the road, right? The second semester is almost done and, uh, or the first semester of my second year is almost done. So really just getting about that and really going for it and uh, seeing where things go from there. With that being said, I got about five minutes left, so I'll tackle what's happening next week or this week coming up that I'm really excited about. Um, Though I did say I didn't audition for Saturday Night Live, tomorrow I'm actually auditioning for the next best thing to Saturday Night Live, and that's the HBS show 
For those who have been listening from season one, if you remember, one of the things I was very much excited about was auditioning for an HBS show and then getting in as Dumble Noria for our Harry Potter and the, Cla- and the Class Card of Secrets uh, show from last April in 2015. Um, so auditions are now coming up this week. And so after this podcast show, literally after I finish this and hang up the mic, I'm pretty much going to be rehearsing the song that I'm going to be singing next um, or on tomorrow for that matter as well. And just kind of going from there and seeing if, if things work back, uh, work well, I get a call back and hopefully I'll be cast in the HBS show in 2016. There also is a club event that my social enterprise club that I'm co-president of is hosting that's sharing uh, essentially what our interest groups are about, whether it's education, international development, impact investing, trying to share kind of a status update of what's happening in these interest groups. What are we trying to do and accomplish for social enterprise for our membership? And that happens on Thursday. Uh, and not to mention what another new program that's, that's out there called Peer Leadership um, mentors were essentially you're helping second years not only mentor first year students but also help them develop as peer leaders. Uh, one of my all time favorite professors at HBS, uh, Professor Margolis, uh, who taught me lead, is going to be at a session coming up on Wednesday night that I'm very much looking forward to seeing him again. It's been a year since I last saw him speak or teach uh, in the classroom, so I'm very much looking forward to him um, um, doing that session and be definitely in, in the audience for that matter. Last but not least, um, one of the traditions about Harvard is Harvard versus Yale football game, otherwise called the game. Now, last year, I definitely was able to participate in this by actually going to the game when I was here at Harvard. This year, it's actually going to be held in Yale. Will I be attending? No. But at the same time, I'll likely be watching it some way, somehow, finding it on internet or on TV somewhere for that matter. But it's obviously a big event, not to mention the tailgate, not to mention the whole weekend as a whole. Um, So that should be fun as well for that matter. So with that being said, I'm actually going to end this a little bit short. I think I think I was so caught up on, on making sure we cover all this material. I actually finished a couple minutes early. So um, that pretty much is it for this week in life in the NBA. Um, already, like I said before, we got another uh, jam-packed week, not to mention class uh, this week as well. For the last week um, of f- f- like three or four weeks we got left in class um, before exams. Uh, but in any case, I just want to thank you all for listening in. I uh, hope this is helpful for you. Hopefully you got something out of this that was helpful for you to understand what business school is like or Harvard Business School for that matter from my perspective. Um, just another shout out for our sponsor, Magnetic Interviewing, my startup. Essentially, uh, if you are interested in, in improving your interviewing skills, whether for applica- or applying for business school or graduate school or jobs or internships, I invite you to go to my website www.magneticinterviewing.com and sign up for our free The Three B's to Issue Interview uh, webinar. Or also, you can sign up for our free How to Issue Interview 7 Video Boot Camp. Uh, both of them are listed on www.magneticinterviewing.com. Definitely be helpful for you, your friends, and your loved ones, whether it's applying for jobs, internships, or graduate school for that matter. Magnetic Interviewing, www.magneticinterviewing.com. Once again, thank you so much for listening on this podcast. I look forward to sharing more uh, about what's going on next week for a new episode. If you like this episode, feel free to share this with other people. You can download this episode on iTunes uh, and all the episodes of, of all 43 episodes of Life in the NBA. You can look it up on iTunes. Just type in Philip Blackett, Life in the NBA in iTunes or go to lifeinthenba.com one way or the other uh, you can download it you can listen to it wherever you go it does not matter about location we have a number of people from international a number of people from across the country go to iTunes or lifeinthenba.com and just search Philip Blackett Life in the NBA and be able to get the episode that you want and listen to it hopefully it's helpful for you and your friends for that matter so as I said before Thank you once again for listening in. I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to listen to this and share it with other people. Tune in next week for a brand new episode of Life in the NBA. And with that being said, take care. God bless. Have a good week. And I'll see you next week. All right. Take care. Thank you.